Hi, good afternoon or probably good morning or probably good evening. This is a lecture on um, critical thinking on the topic of six hats. Um, I'm Anissa Kasim and I will be your lecturer today. Um, today we are going to look at um, several things that we want to achieve. The first one is we would like to understand the purpose of six, hat, uh, six thinking hats. And secondly, we would like to identify and differentiate the different thinking hats and their functions. And third and finally, we would like for the students to be able to use six thinking hats in discussing an issue. Six thinking hats is basically a critical thinking tool. How do I um, explain this? For example, if you were an explorer and you find um, yourself in an island and you would like to find out what's going on in that island, what are there and things of that nature, you would take a look around, right? You would observe and you would um, <clears throat> make sure you um, note each and everything. Uh, but usually what we, f what we find that we note um, are only things that are prominent. For example, look at this picture. Um, the f if anyone were to um, ask you, what is this island about? You would say, oh, it has um, you know, a green greenery on one side and then right in the middle, there's a huge volcano, right? That's probably what you're gonna say and it's surrounded by water. Now. Six thinking hat gives you an overview um, or a grid if you like so that each um, you, it w you would put like a grid onto um, an island or a, a problem and you look at it one bit at a time. Now let us talk about six thinking hats. Six thinking hats um, was created by Edward de Bono. It is a critical thinking tool. Now, um, these six thinking hats are of different colors and each color would function differently. Right, um, why do we use it? We use it as a tool for group discussion and indiv individual thinking. That means you can, make, you can use it to help you to um, optimize your group discussion and individual thinking. Uh, secondly, it is a means for a group to think together more effectively. Imagine you have six people in your group. There would be six different ways of thinking about things, right? But with six thinking hats, we would, all of us, all six of us would think about one thing at one time. Now, the third reason why we mean, uh, we use six thinking hats is that it is a means or a way to plan thinking processes in a detailed and cohesive way. With six thinking hats, you know exactly what you're gonna do one after another. Then it would hit all the areas and then it would make your work and your thinking more cohesive. Now, the premise of six thinking hat is this. Doing everything at the same time would only create confusion. Basically, six thinking hats would help you and give you um, a frame of reference. There are five advantages of six thinking hats. The first one, six thinking hats uh, encourages parallel thinking. Second, it encourages full spectrum thinking. Third one, it separates ego from performance. Next, it allows the obtaining of fuller input from more people. And finally, it encourages performance rather than ego defense. What do I mean by this? Let's look at the first thing first. Okay, it encourages parallel thinking. What does, what does it mean? Parallel thinking means that all your group members are thinking in one direction. So the more um, you work together, you are thinking about one thing, the better. Next, it encourages full spectrum thinking. What does that mean? Full spectrum thinking means that you cover all the bases, you cover all possibilities. So that mean, that's what it means by full spectrum thinking. Next, it separates ego from performance. Um, whenever you do a group discussion, it is 
whether you want it or not, it is a social event. It is a social thing because you're not working by yourself. You're working with people. And sometimes um, people tend to think that they own their ideas. So if, pe uh, if the next person say, oh, that's a bad idea or, oh, I don't think that's, um, you know, that's going to work. They, whenever somebody criticize an idea, the person who comes up with an idea, with that idea, would feel threatened or would feel defensive, you know. Um, and they would think that the criticism is not on the idea but on them. So six thinking hats would help you separate ego from performance. You will know that when you are doing this, it's not about you. It's about the problem and solving the problem. Next, it helps us to obtain fuller input from more people. What does that mean? You know, um, when you work in a group, there would be different kinds of personality, right? So um, having six thinking hats would help you to obtain input or information from each and every one of that person, those personalities. The final advantage is six thinking hat encourages performance rather than ego defense. Now, it calls back to the third point which is separates ego from performance when you are not when you understand that you are not um, performing your ego uh, this is not about you this is about performance uh, of the group not about you when you understand that it makes you um, be more encouraging to people it helps you be more open to people it helps elicit better performance from each and every one of uh, the group members because everybody knows that we, when, we are doing, when we are doing six thinking hats right, it's not about you, it's about the problem. Now, of the six thinking hats, this is very important. This is the only hat that focuses on the process. It means that this hat does not talk about the subject. This hat talks about how are we going to discuss this subject, okay? This is an overview of process control hat. I call it the boss hat, you know, because I'm like that. Um, it looks not at the subject itself, but at the thinking about the project, uh, the subject, sorry. The thinking about the subject. Um, in technical term, the blue hat is more concerned with metacognition, with how to think. We are not just thinking, we are thinking about how to think. That's what metacognition means. Um, it talks about what thinking, what kind of thinking is needed. Um, it organizes the thinking. Okay, first we are going to look at the premise or we're going to look, next we're going to look at this and then and next and after and finally. It plans for action that needed to be taken. Um, it is in charge of the decision making. Um, is it enough? Is the discussion about something enough or do we need to discuss some more? It is um, in charge of coming up with a summary and predicting the outcome or um, collecting the outcome of the discussion. Next, next is white thinking hats. White thinking hats is all about facts. It's all about facts, you know, you're not talking about whether this is good or this is bad, no. What, what do you have? What information do you have? What more information do you need? How are you going to get them? This is all about the information. Um, so this collects, um, this thinking head would collect information, it collects data. It is neutral and objective. That means you are not supposed to uh, pass judgment at this point. You just collecting, you know. Um, like I said earlier, what do you know? What do you need to find out? How do you gonna? How are you gonna find out all this other information? That's under white hat. How do I remember that? Hmm. White hat. White is like paper, and you put you write your information on paper, don't you? So white paper, paper white facts. That's how you, that's how I remember anyway. You can do whatever you want. You can you can create another way for you to. Um, remember what hat does what. Next is red thinking hat. Um, red thinking hat is all about feeling. It's all about gut's reaction. It's all about intuitive and visceral gut 
reaction or statement of emotional feelings. Um, and you don't have to provide any justification. Why do we need this? You know, sometimes when we have to do something and we don't like to do it, it helps if we can express how we feel. Oh, I really hate this. I don't want to do this. But then you know you have to do it. But because your feelings are expressed, you're like, okay, fine, I'll do it. So this is basically that. Um, also, red thinking hat allows for you to express your feelings because sometimes when um, you are in a serious discussion and things like that, people always think that feelings and emotion has no, feelings and emotions have no place at all in, in a discussion. Which is why sometimes people like when they don't get to express their feelings, they feel like they are, you know, they're not free and they're, they feel that they are, they are a bit dictated on, you know, um, stuck somehow. So six thinking hats allow you um, to um, use statement of feelings only when, you know, when red hat thinking comes up. So you talk about your intuition, your hunches, your guts. You're feeling at that very moment and you have to understand feelings can change, you know, because sometimes you don't like something and then you do it. You're like, hmm, that wasn't so bad. I don't mind it. You know, I used to hate it, but now I don't mind it. And then maybe you do it some more. You're like, I actually like that. You know, feelings can change. You don't have to give any justification. You know, you can, um, you can be um, as emotional as you like. Next, black hat thinking. Now, this is what people are very, very used to. They're used to finding faults with things. They're used to be able to talk about obstacles. You know, it's not that it's bad, but it is kind of overused. You know, I'm sure you've been to um, many meetings where they're like, oh, you know, um, somebody was saying something good. I'm like, oh, no, you know, that's never going to work because blah, blah, blah. So it is tend to be overused. Now, what does it cover? Black hat thinking is cover black uh, bad point judgment. Logic is applied to identifying flaws and barriers and obstacles and seeking mismatch. It talks about difficulties um, and weaknesses and dangers that you might you might face, and you have to give your justification. You have to give your logical reason. This is this is not red hat, you know, where you don't have to justify. Everything has to be justified. Um, it helps you spot, uh, it helps you spot the risks, you know, um, and it is excellent. It's excellent, but it's generally overused. You know, people talk about bad things all the time. Not very many people talk about any other thing at all, which is why meetings are so depressing. Now, um, you have to understand as well, Black hat thinking is not just about the bad points. It is also about caution. What does that mean? It talks about policy. It talks about rules. It talks about law. It talks about, um, you know, um, regulations. That if you, if you are writing things down and then you're like, oh, this is about the statute 108, it goes under black hat thinking. Next is... Next is yellow hat thinking, and it's all about benefits. You talk about good points, you know. Um, you talk uh, talk about the positivity, um, the positive uh, aspects. You know. again, this is not a Pollyanna thing. As with the black hat thinking, yellow hat thinking must also be applied with logic. You know, you identify the benefits, but it has to be logical. It has to have justification. It seeks harmony, it, um, it seeks positives, it seeks plus points, um, why idea is useful, and it values sensitivity. What does this mean? Now, do you remember that in Black Hat, um, in addition to all the negative things, you also need to talk about laws and rules and policy? Well, in Yellow Hat thinking, you talk about sensitivity. You are being sensitive. Um, you're not just like um, an elephant in a china shop anymore. So you will talk about um, what values go with this, uh, this particular topic. 
what kind of ethics judgment that you need to that you need to be aware of okay values next next is green hat thinking which calls for creativity remember in the black hat thinking we look for the bad points we look for the problems we find out um, the, dif the difficulties and obstacles well for green hat thinking this is where you create the solution to the problems that you find in the black hat thinking. Am I making myself clear? Let me say that again. For all the difficulties that you find um, in the black hat thinking, is applied here in terms of say, uh, seeking solution. Um, creativity, green hat, um, is also responsible to answer statement of provocation. What does that mean? I'll get back to you um, on that. Now, an investigation, you investigate, you, um, you go with it, you know, you seek solution, you seek ideas, alternative possibilities, um, and solution to black hat problem, like I said before. Now, let's talk about statement of provocation. What does this mean? Is this about, you know, being, um, being angry with people, or is it about um, fighting? No, it's not. Statement of provocation is basically you um, posing on a hypothesis. You posing uh, when you pose an hypothesis. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, when you pose a hypothesis, um, you see where it goes. For example, if Superman has a fight with Incredible Hulk, who would win? That, my friend, is statement of provocation. It provokes you to think. It does not mean um, you trying to pick fights with people, but you are um, investigating that and you seeing where that thought goes. You know, you discuss pros and cons and after that. Does that make sense? I hope so. Now, let's talk about the advantages of six thinking hats. This is basically a recap from the advantages um, that I talked about earlier. It separates the ego from performance. That means um, you are responsible for the performance of your discussion, uh, for how completely your discussion is, and not about your ego, not about, oh, that's my idea. Oh, he doesn't take my idea. It's all about the performance. Did we answer the questions? Um, did we uh, find the solution? That is the performance that you are more interested in. Six thinking hat supports the separation of different modes of thinking. As we remember from my illustration or my example in the looking at the explorer and the, and the island, you, when, you, um, when you talk about one thing at a time, you are able to give it your full attention and not just explore the, uh, just note the important things only. Okay, so inquisitive um, line of thinking at one go and um, looking for positive at one time, you know. When you, ex uh, when you mix everything up, you slow yourself down. Imagine like a computer. If you open like all sorts of windows and this, um, you know, doing editing here and looking at YouTube here and looking at um, uh, Facebook right there, um, as opposed to just shutting everything down and just doing um, one thing, the processor tends to um, tends to work harder and tends to work more effectively. Yeah, um, because it goes to the third advantage. Because when you try to do everything at one time, you cannot do anything effectively. You might be able to do some but it won't be as effective as if you devote your full attention to one thing at a time. Why? Because it disturbs the balance of neurotransmitter. In your brain, yeah? In your brain, uh, different areas light up whenever you do different things. Like my example with the computer just now, when you try to do everything at the same time, your whole brain lights up. So um, the energy or the, the capabilities are being dispersed into all direction. So when you do one thing at a time, your whole capacity, the whole RAM, I guess, 
of your CPU can be devoted to one task and complete it um, effectively and on time. Fast, you know? I'm sure you want to work fast, you know? All right. Next, group think together in a focused manner. Um, when they use six thinking hats, because you know, you do one thing at one time, they tend to stay on task because um, there's no time to kind of like look at the clouds and um, think about your cat or something like that. You know, you will look at your uh, task and you do it one um, at one time. Um, and then because of that, it really helps in focusing your effort, your combined effort. Um, finally, it is used as a deliberate focusing tool of the discussion on a particular approach as needed during a meeting or collaborative session. What does, what does this mean? Um, <clears throat> you don't have to use six thinking, six thinking tools at all times. For example, if you have um, a meeting or a collaborative um, effort, um, you decide in the middle of the meeting, hey, we need to just think right now of the advantages. So everyone will put on what? Yellow hat at the same time. You know, um, it's a deliberate focusing tools that you use at different times um, in your life, basically. Now, finally, let's, this, is, this is a very simple and easy way for you to realize, um, for you to practice, I mean, for you to practice your um, usage of six thinking hats, how you apply your six thinking hats. Now, uh, for blue hat, let's talk about movies, okay? For blue hat, you decide what is the focus, what are the objective of this discussion. You don't talk about the movie yet. You talk about what you, you would like to achieve in this discussion. Second, you talk about red hat thinking. Do you like the movie? Do you hate the movie? You think the movie is boring, you know? So you can just say how you feel about the movie. Now next, um, white hat thinking. White hat thinking would require you to um, collect the data or collect the facts or collect the info about the movie. Who's the director? Who's the script writer? What's the plot? Who plays what? You know, the cast of character. Mm, um, and things of that nature. You know, all the, um, all the information that you have. Um, and what kind of information do you require still? How are you going to find that information? So that's white hat thinking for you. Um, next, yellow hat thinking and black hat thinking together, okay? Let's say you talk about one character or, or like two characters, you know, one the hero and one the villain or protagonist or antagonist. Now, it's very easy to find good things about the good guy and it's very easy to find the bad things about the bad guy, right? I want you to flip that. I want you to find good things about the bad guy and I want you to find bad things about the good guy. So, for example, let's talk about the movie Avengers. The Avengers, right? Um, Loki and Thor. Well, I guess the Avengers and Thor. Um, Loki and Thor. For Clearly, Loki is the bad guy and Thor is the good guy, right? Or one of the good guys, I should say. So find what are the good things about Loki that you can find. You know, how smart it is, how, you know, I'm sure you can find more than that, right? Um, next, um, green hat. Now you write an acrotic poem, you know, do something creative about it. Acrotic po poem is basically you write, you know, you write the name of that character, for example, T-H-O-R. T stands for what, H stands for what, you know, so that's, that's you being creative. So if you if you done that, basically you would understand the basics of uh, six thinking hats, right? Good luck. I guess that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed um, your time with me. And if you don't understand, just go ahead and rewind. Bye. And thank you.